Hi guys, Paul Pluto on the Paul Pluto channel and today I'm doing paid reviews. Paid reviews. Now guys, this is uh, from, I think it's pronounced, oh this is from Bishop. Bishop, okay, take it easy Bishop. Most Holy Father of Luxury, payment for a review sent. The question is as follows. I'm looking at a Datejust reference number 16264. Black or blue dial oyster bracelet. The prices on Chrono sit at around 4,000 US dollars. From what I can tell, the watch was never hip with the crowd, but I like it. It's everything I expect from an everyday watch. Uh, thoughts? Take it easy, Bishop. Yes, very, very interesting question. This is the uh, 16264 is the this is the turnograph the turnograph it's kind of what you would get if you crossed a uh, a date just with a submariner it's a date just with a rotating bezel and this is it's quite an interesting watch indeed there i i quite like the turnograph um Look, it's it's an interesting thing there. Um, you're sort of saying that the prices... I, I don't think the prices are any softer than a standard date job. I really don't see them being terribly much softer. So uh, I, I gotta be completely frank with you. Um, I quite like the Turnograph. I think it's a great watch. I think it's a great watch. And uh, when I have a look at um, when I look at Chrono Twenty Four, yes, yes, there's a quite a big selection of them. But there's also a big selection of standard Datejust with the white gold bezel, the sixteen two three four. So when when I compare the two, um, I wouldn't say that these this model here, the Turnograph, is necessarily a dog. It's probably about the same price as a standard date, just same sort of money there. Um, I don't think it's a uh, a dog there. Yeah, it's it's a little it's it's not as popular. You don't see as many of them out in the wild. I agree with that, but it's always been in the Rolex range for a long time, and. Uh, I don't think they're really, the pricing is really saying, well, this model is a dog. I don't think they're really a bargain. When you compare the price of these to a standard date just, um, I don't think they're a bargain. Would I buy one? Hey, if you like it, I think they're, they're, they're a good buy. They're basically a date just with a, with a bezel, a rotating bezel, like a timer. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic combo deal. I like him. I quite like it. I quite like it. Uh, when you say they were never hit with the crowd, uh, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I, I think they are popular. That Rolex has had them for such a long uh, time there. I mean, when something's not popular, like, like the... Um, they've had models like the Oyster Quartz, that... They killed it off. They very quickly killed it off. So I, I I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the turnograph. I think it's a great it's a great complication on the date just. It's certainly on the uh, you want a black or a blue dial on an oyster bracelet. That's a cool combo. I think you'd be paying a little bit more of a premium for a nicer dial color. And you'd certainly be paying a bit more for the Oyster Bracelet. For some reason, uh, a lot of the date just sort of came on the Jubilee Bracelet. Even though the funny thing is, is that the Jubilee Bracelet, they were actually slightly more expensive compared to the Oyster Bracelet when they were new. Second hand wise, the, the Oyster Bracelet seems to be a little bit more desirable to have there. Um, I I would really say I think this watch is a great watch. It's a great. It's it's a true date just uh, ever popular. It's it's kind of a little bit. I suppose that you could say it's a little bit unusual. It's a little bit unusual. Uh, I I think it's a cool watch. They do it in two tone as well. Um, but um, I I I would say to you, I think it's a great watch to get there. It's a little bit unusual. 
a little bit different and uh, it's still it's still a, such a it's a very very popular I think it's a great Rolex reference I, I've got no qualms with buying one of them I, I, I think they're they're a really cool cool piece to have in your collection there uh, yeah I reckon go for it go for it if it if it's if you can get one at a reasonable price whew, go for it uh, they're, they're a little bit small 36 mil they're a 36 mil data so you know that's that's the only problem with the Datejust is that they've got a few different incarnations. You've got Datejust, you've got Datejust Two, and now you've got the the Datejust Forty One, which basically is the same as the Datejust Two, but they've they've changed how the proportions look a bit. This it's just they've slimmed it down a bit. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of the Datejust. I love. I loved. I've, I've owned Datejust for a long time. There, um, I, I think they're a great piece. I, I, I can't. I think it's one of the most comfortable watches in the Rolex range. Is the Datejust? So, in in my opinion, there, I reckon go for it. If if you really like the uh, the Turnograph, whew, by all means, go for it. I, I I wouldn't say they're unpopular. I think that's a bit of a wrong thing because you would think if it was unpopular, it would be like a bargain. It'd be significantly cheaper. And the standard date just but they're kind of in par if you look on chrono 24 um they're not significantly cheaper than the standard date just i suppose you could always argue well they should be a lot more well yes and no but um i i think it's an interesting interesting variation on the date just theme there um i i i wouldn't be afraid to buy one i think they are a cool watch date just is really cool uh, it just depends whether the 36 mil you find is a little bit small or not. That's the the only the only thing that could possibly detract from it. I I find the 36 mil size, you know, it's kind of strange. Like I I'm I'm uh, you know years ago you had one size, you, well you had the ladies, you had the the mid size, and you had the mid size or boy size, and you had the 36 mil. You didn't have these bigger quest for watches, but they they seem to be moving back a bit. I mean, if you look at some of the Protect models, uh, like with the World Time, my World Time came out 2000, was 37 mil. They had a new model in 2006, which was 39.5 mil, and then they revised it a year ago, and they uh, they made it 38.5. So they didn't go back down to the 37 mil, but they've moved it. It's interesting they've moved it smaller. So um, I, I think this is a great watch. The Turnograph is a great watch. I don't think you'll lose money on it if you, if you wanted to resell it down the track. Uh, it's just a classic Rolex. Just a classic Rolex. Uh, I think they're. Uh, I think it's a great model. I think you'd really enjoy it. It's. I reckon it's a heavy. It, it's a good. It's a good piece. I would not be. I would not have any problem in recommending you to buy one. Um, great piece, a lot of upside to it. Grab it, grab it whilst you can. Uh, I've actually did a story on the Turnograph a little bit of time ago. I think they're a great watch, fantastic watch. Uh, grab it. So yes, thumbs up, thumbs up from the Pontiff. Tell me what you guys think. The Rolex Turnograph. What do you think? I'm Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel. Tell me what you guys think of that. Okay.